Welcome, everybody. Um, thanks, Lily. Uh, I'm going to introduce myself um, real quick and then give my colleagues an opportunity to introduce themselves and we'll get started. Um, my name is Bo Knudsen. I'm the senior program officer for uh, the Swahili program here on the CLS program. Uh, I am joined uh, by my colleague, Jessica Klink, and I'll let her introduce herself. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us this afternoon. My name is Jessica, and I'm a program coordinator for CLS. And previously, I was a resident director for the Swahili program in 2019. And we also have um, Abiyadun, Abiyadun here who can uh, introduce himself. Yes, hello everyone. My name is Abe and I am a CLS 2020 Swahili uh, program alumni. I am also an, an alumni ambassador for the CLS program and I am excited to be here today and I'm excited to join Bo um, and, uh, and our, uh, and our fellow officer here so I can speak with you all about uh, the CLS program and hopefully convince you all to apply for the CLS Swahili program. So yes. Yeah, great. Um, big thanks to uh, Abe for joining us uh, from a very far away location uh, in Central Asia. Um, but I'll, I won't steal his thunder. I'll let him kind of talk about that a little bit later, uh, some of the things that he's done since the program. Um, but I can also just note that Abe was an alumnus of the 2020 virtual program for CLS. So uh, if anyone has any particular questions about the virtual program, uh, you know, it'd be a good time to, to kind of chat with Abe today. Uh, so let's keep rolling. Um, today we are going to, um, oh, uh, Jessica, I'll just roll with this one if that's okay, sorry. Uh, in this presentation, we're going to start with an overview of the CLS program, including some specific details about the program. Um, then we're going to hear from Abe about his experience. Um, and at the end, we'll have time to answer any questions that you have about the CLS program and the application process. Uh, we'll be answering questions in the in the chat box. So um, as they occur to you, just go ahead and drop them in the chat box um, in Zoom, and we will get to them towards the end. So the CLS program is a fully funded summer study abroad program, and it supports US students in all fields of study to learn what the U.S. Department of State refers to as critical languages. And Swahili is just one of the 15 languages offered through the CLS program. And then uh, one of the most exciting things about the CLS program is that it is fully funded by the U.S. government. The program covers domestic travel from each participant's home in the U.S. to Washington, D.C. for pre-departure orientation, as well as a uh, round trip international travel to your program site. And I will actually mention, um, we will not be holding uh, uh, pre-program orientation in DC this year. Um, we will hold that virtually. So no domestic travel there, but it will still, the CLS program will still cover um, international airfare. It also covers any applicable visa fees as well as the cost of tuition, room and board, cultural excursions and activities in the host country. And alumni of the program receive undergraduate credit through Bryn Mawr College, as well as a certified actual OPI test score and certificate to verify their language progress. Great, thanks, Jessica. And um, I can just note that this is a picture from the 2019 CLS Swahili program uh, on which Jessica worked. Um, so those are her students that uh, are by that waterfall. Um, I can take the next slide and just kind of talk a little bit about like why study Swahili. Um, Swahili um, is uh, uh, really just critical, really important language. It's to, it was determined to be a critical language by the US Department of State. That's why it's in our um, uh, CLS Institute group. Um, in general, as you probably know, proficiency in a foreign language really opens a lot of doors um, for our participants and our alumni professionally, um, but also with in terms of culture and learning and the experiences that are sort of afforded to them uh, using their language skills. Um, but we wanted to talk a little bit like why Swahili um, and make a pitch for Swahili Institute. Swahili is a major language in Eastern Africa. There's over 150 million speakers um, of Swahili um, on the continent. Uh, Swahili is the official language of Kenya, Uganda, and Tanzania, and the official language of East African communities um, in uh, the larger East African community 
um, including uh, Burundi and South Sudan. Swahili is also one of the official languages of the Democratic Republic of the Congo, Malawi, and Mozambique. In addition to East Africa, Swahili is spreading in Northern Africa as well. There are 20 times more secondary speakers of Swahili than native speakers across Africa, which is really, uh, I think, testifies to how much it's becoming sort of a, a lingua franca uh, in the continent. Arabic and Swahili are deeply connected, and there's a relationship uh, between Arabic and Swahili that spans for over a millennia. Uh, the name Kiswahili was actually derived from an Arabic word for language of the coastal dwellers. In addition to these fun facts about Swahili, uh, we have a quote from a CLS Swahili alumni ambassador from a few years back named uh, Alyssa Harvey. Her quote is, Swahili is increasingly useful for trade, business, and international affairs. It allows you to connect with people from a wide variety of cultures in East Africa. You can learn so much from the grammar and syntax of Swahili. There are so many fun words and it helps you shift away from Eurocentric languages and concepts. Uh, one uh, additional thing to note is that when applying for the CLS program, you do choose a single language and you also uh, choose your language level. Um, if you have any questions about which language level to apply for, you can check out our website where we have tips to help determine what level is the most appropriate for you to apply for based on your experience. So the CLS Swahili program is hosted for MS Training Center for Development Cooperation, or as commonly called MS TCDC, or just even TCDC for short, uh, which um, is a CLS partner institute in a small community just outside of Arusha, Tanzania. MS TCDC is located in, in Usa River in the Arusha region, which is the gateway to many of Tanzania's national parks, including the famous Serengeti and Mount Kilimanjaro National Park. TCDC is a training center with a wealth of experience in teaching Swahili to international students. So you'll have an extremely driven cadre of teachers, including um, language partners and also staff. Your teachers and many of the language partners form a tight knit welcoming community and their enthusiasm to get to know you coupled with the friendly nature of East African culture will be very clear from the start. Um, so uh, we want you to keep in mind that CLS is a lot more than just a scholarship and a funding opportunity for study abroad. It is an all-inclusive study abroad program focused on immersive language learning. Um, each of our par partner institutes hosts up to 30 CLS scholars and facilitates an intensive eight-week program for students that includes 20 classroom hours or language instruction hours each week, cultural activities, local excursions, and one or two weekend overnight trips. The program is academically challenging and every aspect is designed to maximize language gains and your immersion in the host culture. Throughout the summer, students agree to speak only in Swahili, even if they are absolute beginners. Uh, beginner level speakers do get a two week grace period to learn classroom phrases and survival straight phrases and to get comfortable with using them. Uh, after that two week period, we do ask that they speak only Swahili. Uh, in classes and on all sc scheduled program activities. Additionally, each partner is assigned a language partner, or each participant is assigned a language partner uh, for practice outside of the classroom. And we can hear a little bit more about that. Because of the immersive nature of the CLS program, participants also have unique opportunities to build those meaningful relationships with their host communities with friends and colleagues from the host country and peers in their CLS cohorts who come from all over the United States. Alumni of the program join a vibrant and engaged community of the US Department of State International Exchange alumni and gain access to resources and events supported by the CLS program. So depending on health and safety considerations, it may be necessary to, to hold some or all of the 2022 CLS institutes virtually. Uh, this was the case in 2020. All CLS languages were held virtually. And in 2021, nearly all of the languages were offered virtually with the exception of the Korean program, which was held in Korea. Um, if it is the case that the CLS program will be virtual in 2020, 2022, 
uh, we would follow a similar structure to what we did in 2021 and 2020, emphasizing the language, cultural learning, and building relationships between CLS scholars and people in Tanzania. Uh, students in the virtual program also have individual language partners and are able to participate in cultural activities, uh, such as guest lectures by craftsmen uh, or people in the community, business owners, representatives from NGOs, and visits with traditional tribal communities uh, through the lens of sustainable development on the program. Um, the virtual program does differ from the in-person program, obviously, but we do try to provide um, uh, rigorous uh, academic program components and immersive language oppor uh, learning opportunities through the language partners and through those cultural activities. Um, I wanna pause for a beat and give Abe a chance to talk about um, any uh, cultural activities or language partner experiences um, that stood out for him when he was a virtual program participant. Yeah, um, so um, for me, like as Bo was mentioning, um, like, uh, you know, due to COVID-19 still ongoing, uh, some of the programming may have to be uh, virtual. Uh, and for me in 2020, all of it was virtual. Um, but I think um, even with the virtual program, like, I'm not like exaggerating when I say like CLS was extremely like helpful in helping me achieve like near fluency. Um, and like literally everything that the CLS program does in terms of administering it, is so strong because um, it's a great mixture of, uh, of like classroom instruction plus the cultural uh, activities as well. So for the cultural activities, like we had um, like, uh, you know, people in different sectors of the Tanzanian economy come speak to us about the different things that they do. So we had um, people in the fashion industry, uh, people who make clothes and people who make pottery, people who do like different things. Um, and, you know, we were still able to get like a pretty good cultural experience, albeit virtual. Um, and I think it really perfectly complemented the classroom, uh, the instruction that we had, and then the uh, supplementary um, language partner sessions that we had twice a week was also extremely helpful. Um, and like I say that because in particular, uh, when I first started the CLS program vir virtually in October of last year, which was around this time of last year, um, and by the time I finished, um, so when I started, I was at the intermediate, the intermediate low level, I believe. And then when I finished in November and I took the, um, the OPI, uh, I tested at an advanced mid-level. So I think that really like uh, attests to like how strong and how helpful the CLS program is in terms of like wraparound services for your language immersion. Um, so I think the CLS program does a really fantastic job of really making sure that you get that really great language immersion experience, even if virtual and in person. So I really think that either way, um, this 2022 CLS program will be just as great in person and virtually. And I think you all will really enjoy it. Great. Thanks, Abe. Um, I uh, thought also, um, I know I said we'd answer the questions at the end, but um, I did want to clarify because I do see questions in the chat box. Um, uh, the decision has not been made about whether the program will be virtual or in person for 2022. Um, we are uh, planning for an in-person program uh, because we want to be ready uh, to administer an in-person program uh, if we have the opportunity to. Um, we uh, also, when you apply, you apply for the in-person program, um, and then uh, that determination will be made uh, later, uh, early next year. Um, about whether the program will be virtual or in person. Um, and basically, um, the considerations for that are going to be safety uh, related to COVID-19 and overall safety in general. So uh, you can refer to the State Department travel advisory page or the CDC page for Tanzania um, to see uh, you know, if there are any updates on that um, or to see what the situation is in country. Um, but CLS program is an in-person program. We're excited to do in-person programming. And so we are working towards that now. Um, and there are some other questions I see related to the virtual program, but those uh, uh, we can get to uh, towards the end. Great, thank you, Bo and Abe, for sharing your experience. I'm sure there will be more questions about your personal experiences on the CLS program later. So in addition to the opportunity to study abroad and take language classes on a fully funded program, there are um, a lot of other benefits that come from participating in the CLS program. 
Students on, the, on CLS make substantial gains in language proficiency over the course of just one summer, and proficiency in a critical language opens doors to further academic and employment opportunities in all fields. Studying abroad can also help you develop and hone skills that all employers are looking for, like problem solving, flexibility, adaptability. All of these things will help you stand out to employers and give you an edge in an increasingly competitive uh, globalized job market. Because of the immersive nature of the CLS program, participants also have the unique opportunities to build uh, meaningful relationships in their co host communities, as mentioned previously. And um, students also join the uh, alumni network of US Department of State. And uh, while CLS participants have no service commitment to the US government after completion of the program, um, alumni do receive a certificate of non-competitive eligibility for federal employment uh, if that is your goal. And we can talk more about that later if there are any questions on that. Great, thanks, Jessica. So the CLS application is open now um, at clscholarship.org backslash apply. Uh, in order to prepare a competitive application, we recommend that you start early and reach out to resources on your campus for help. Your application must be submitted no later than uh, 8 p.m. Eastern time on Tuesday, November 16th. That is 5 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, you apply only for one language when you apply. So please keep in mind um, that, uh, you know, uh, if you're here now, you're oriented towards Swahili and applying for Swahili. Um, Swahili, uh, you apply for Swahili language, not necessarily Tanzania. We've been working with the partner in Tanzania for years. But in your application materials, you should focus on learning Swahili uh, rather than going to Tanzania uh, as you put your essays together. Um, applicants are required to submit an unofficial transcript and one recommendation. Uh, four short essays and a statement of purpose make up the core of the application. <clears throat> and if you've already started your application, you'll see that uh, you can go on and enter the email address of your recommender and hit request before you submit the application, and then they will get the materials to make your recommendation uh, by email. Um, we can get to any questions that you have about the application towards the end. Um, Jessica and I are happy to talk about like, um, you know, what makes a good application and to provide some tips uh, and answer questions that anyone has about that. But now I thought it would be a great opportunity for us to hear from uh, Abe uh, a little bit more about his background, his experiences on the program, and maybe a little bit about what he's up to now. Um, so we will kick it over to Abe. Yeah, thank you, Bo. Um, and so, you know, like for me with CLS, um, as I probably mentioned earlier, like 2017 was my first time applying to the CLS program. I was a first year student in university at Salisbury University, as you as you all can see on my sweater there in that foot on the right. Um, and I applied for a different language, actually. And, you know, I didn't even make the first cut. Like, I got the client outright <laughs> in a semi-finalist selection. And then in 2019, I did the Boren Scholarship to Tanzania, um, and I studied uh, Swahili there for six months. And that was when my advisor convinced me that I should reapply. For the program because i was like uh, i already got the client i don't think they're gonna want me a second time she was like you know you never know apply so i applied and then what do you know i get stuck for the first round i get finalists for the second i was like oh wow great i actually got it um and then so as you all know COVID 19 hit and then you know everybody was like fingers crossed maybe we get to go in person but nope uh you know in march we got the email saying sorry because of COVID 19 blah blah, blah all that was canceled you know obviously it was very understandable because the program cares about our health and safety, so we cannot go abroad. But then um, in August, we got uh, this email from American Councils that said, well, there is an opportunity for a virtual program. I was like, oh, say less, I'm going to do it. Um, and then so uh, on October 5, 2020 was the first day of the virtual program and it, and it uh, lasted until November 20th. So it was six weeks of intensive language uh, learning. Um, and it was um, about two hours of in uh, of classroom instruction every day and then uh twice a week of language partner sessions and then uh we also had like group check-in sessions uh, with their uh with their program coordinator 
Bo had those. Uh, and then like um, like our actual like language uh, program coordinator uh, for Swahili as well. Uh, and then we also had culture sessions. So everything was built like around um, like our ability to complete the program. So it was actually very flexible as well. So it wasn't like I was waking up at, you know, five in the morning to do CLS for four hours. Like it was something that was built very efficiently um, to track our, uh, our language progress and also, you know, give us adequate time um, to also do the program virtually because there were a lot of students that were doing different things um, around the same time. So, you know, students were working uh, jobs as well, students were in school. Um, so the way that American councils that did the program was really well administered. Um, and I was quite shocked because when I started the program, as I mentioned earlier, I was at the intermediate level. So I was like, you know, six weeks, I'm probably not gonna get anything like out of this. Like, you know, my level is probably not gonna be uh, like any, any better. I probably stay at the same level, if not go down. But then I advanced way beyond like my expectations. Like I scored at the advanced mid level at the end of six weeks. And I know that I was actually really quite good for advanced mid because like when I did all the math of like classroom instruction, culture sessions, homework, tests, quizzes, supplementary things that we did, like all of it seriously, and I mean seriously impacted my language acquisition. Um, and my language acquisitions like seriously improved that I was speaking straight Swahili for two hours in class every day. Um, so like it was really, really cool. And, you know, even, even though it was virtual, I was still able to get such an intensive experience uh, that like I wish like I was in person because I it really made me wonder like if I was able to score this well virtually, like imagine just how good I would be in person. So I think like in, in general, like in total, uh, the American Council's like administration of the program was very well done um, and it was adequate in the sense that I did not feel overstressed. I did not feel overworked, but although at the same time it was challenging, it was rigorous, but it was a type of rigor that is really integral to a strong language acquisition. So I think it was a really well done program and I really enjoyed it. And I seriously wish I could go in person, but COVID-19 says otherwise. <laughs> so until then, uh, I will continue to practice my Swahili. And I really do think that after you all participate in the program, you will have such a renowned, um, like a like a renewed appreciation for language learning, and you will see just how good your language skills can become, and it will continue to motivate you. So I think overall, my experience was great, and I'm pretty sure all of you will also have a similar experience as well in the CLS program. <laughs> Thank you, Abe. That was great to hear about your experience and and your encouragement for applying and um, the positive things you had to say about the virtual program as well. Um, you know, I think we 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 have to. We had one slide about the Host Institute MSTCDC, but we have to give props to them because they are. Uh, we're really lucky to be working with with MSTCDC and those teachers and those uh, institute staff. Um, they are really gifted and enthusiastic. And they have ways of making the classroom learning experience really fun and engaging for participants. Yeah, and I can also add uh, back in for like a, a few seconds, like MSCCDC as well. Just like I give them a lot of credit because uh, the teachers uh, really do a good job of welcoming you. Because like you know, uh, for anybody learning a new language, it's challenging. Um, and I can say like when I first started learning Swahili back in 2019 on the Boren Scholarship, it was quite a challenge. But like the more I did it. Uh, the better I got at it with any language that you do. But also I think something that really added to the experience was the fact that the teachers were so welcoming. Like, you know, in Swahili, we call them like malimu. Uh, and they were really, really encouraging and really welcoming uh, in terms of, you know, uh, your sentence structure, your homework assignments, like everything that you did, you felt um, really like passionate to go to class and engage in all the activities. Uh, and like, you know, you can really like feel yourself like getting better at the language. And I think like, the uh, the experience that you have in class with your instructors with your with your instructors really really does truly impact your language learning ability and mine was absolutely like over the top amazing so at the same time like MSCCD is really amazing but I also think that you know uh, a, a lot of it I also give credit to the American Council for being so great uh, in like uh, carefully picking out our teachers and our, our partner organizations so I really do believe that you all would enjoy working with MSTCDC and I can guarantee you that you will get uh, a great experience working with them as students as well. Awesome thanks Abe um, and you know 
I encourage everyone who's here to, you know, ask uh, any questions they have directly for Abe. Um, we can get to in the Q and A. Thanks, Bo and Abe. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit more about um, what a successful applicants look like uh, for the CLS program. And I just want to touch on something that Abe mentioned that he did apply back in 2017 and didn't get the scholarship. And, you know, we do often hear from applicants that they or participants that they apply many times before getting the scholarship. So to please don't get discouraged if you don't win the scholarship the very first time you write your application, you know, keep trying, keep reaching out to those fellowships office writing centers to help you with your application. Um, but successful applicants do come from a wide range of backgrounds and are excited to represent the diversity of the United States. The program places emphasis on students who are prepared for the rigorous academic program and the intensive nature of the program. In your application, it is really important to show that you can succeed on the CLS program, which includes addressing your ability to study intensively, your skills at adapting to a group program setting where you're not making all the decisions because it is a group-based program, and your cultural flexibility and maturity. You should show that you're motivated to pursue language study and that you will continue your studies after your return to the United States. And that doesn't exactly mean that your campus has to offer courses in Swahili or whichever language that you choose, but you should have a clear plan for how you'll continue learning um, the language in the future. And then finally, you need to make a clear uh, connection between the language you wish to study and your academic or professional career goals. Um, and one thing that we really do recommend is watching our application tips video. Um, you can find it on our website um, at clscholarship.org slash apply. And there's a link to the video there. And that video will walk you through each essay question and help you prepare a successful application. Um, it may also be helpful to look at um, alumni ambassador profiles on our website. Um, Abe's profile is on there, although we are talking to him face, face to face now, you can ask him questions, but these profiles are very helpful to see what people are doing with the, with the language that they learned or how, how they framed um, their experiences on their CLS application. So definitely take a look there as well. Awesome. Thanks, Jessica. Um, so <clears throat> to recap, um, applications are due on November 16th. Uh, <clears throat> 2021. Um, we want to talk about the timeline about what happens after you apply. So in late January, uh, every applicant will be notified of whether they have advanced or not to the semifinalist round of selection. This notification is done by email to the primary email address that you put on the application. So be sure to use a valid email address that will be valid next year uh, when you apply. Uh, those who advance to the semifinalist rounds can expect to be notified by early March 2022 of whether they have been selected for the CLS award. Uh, students who are selected for the, the award will have about two weeks to either accept or decline uh, the opportunity, at which point declined scholarships will be offered to alternate candidates. So you might get a notification in early March that says you're an alternate, uh, and that just means that um, you know, you're sort of in a little bit of a holding pattern uh, until you get notification uh, that you've been promoted or um, we end up with our cohort and you are not promoted. Um, but many alternates are promoted each year. So if you get that, then um, uh, keep, you, you'll keep that in mind that there still is an opportunity to be promoted. Um, the program will begin in June. Uh, and go into August. Um, this is true for the virtual program or the in-person program. Um, it is an eight-week program uh, that covers that period of time. Um, at this point, I think we can move on and, and answer any questions that anyone has. Um, uh, I'm going to open up the chat box, but feel free to um, think of any specific questions that you want to share with Abe. Uh, or with Jessica, she has experience on the in-person program. Um, anything that's on your mind that you're curious about or that you would like us to expand on, feel free to ask. Uh, so let's see. So for the virtual program, um, uh, we have the question, for the virtual program, would we have to secure our own housing during the program? 
Um, the answer to that is, is probably yes. Um, but I can answer this question by answering another question on, on the chat box about a virtual stipend. Virtual participants do receive a stipend um, to cover expenses related to the program. That stipend is not calculated to cover two months of rent or two months salary at a, at a job, uh, but it is not insignificant. Um, and it does cover a lot of costs associated with, with um, having to do four hours of language study a day or four hours of program time a day. Um, if you want more specific information about that, um, feel free to reach out to the email address here, CL scholarship, CLS scholarship at AmericanCouncils.org. I can go ahead and take a, the, a few next questions. There is one question about the acceptance rate for the Swahili program. And this number really depends on a number of factors, depends on how many students are placed at, at the Swahili Institute, um, how many people apply, but it's not really a number that we calculate, but we can say that the, the entire scholarship receives around 5,000 applications every year um, with about uh, 500 to 600 scholarships. So overall, it is about a 10% acceptance rate. However, um, if you remember Bo mentioning um, alternates getting promoted to scholarships, that number doesn't take into account some of those alternates that are eventually awarded scholarships when or the original recipient declines. Um, and then the next question here is about the non-competitive eligibility that we talked about earlier. And um, non-competitive eligibility is a hiring preference that or a hiring status that um, alumni of the CLS program receive. And it allows you to bypass some of the bureaucratical um, hoops that you have to jump through if you're applying for a federal job. So we do have an entire toolkit on our website for how to leverage yourself when you have NCE status. And we have some stories of alumni who have successfully used their NCE status to be hired um, for a federal position. Um, However, it's really important to put that you have your NCE status um, at the top of your resume when you're applying for these jobs, and we will also give you a certificate. And um, it, the hiring managers, some are very much looking for this status. Um, on usajobs.gov, where one applies for federal jobs, sometimes there are specific filters put on there for only people with NCE status. This job is only open to those with NCE status. So um, as you can see, it's not quite a preference, but it is a status that allows you to jump through a few hoops in the hiring process for federal jobs. Um, but I would definitely recommend checking out our toolkit on our website. It's under the alumni tab. Um, you can also check out the Return Peace Corps volunteer website, um, the NCE status that they receive after their service is um, very, very similar to what uh, participants on the CLS program receive. And then we do have a question for Abe. This person is asking, when you started the program in 2019, were you a beginner speaker? Um, yeah. Uh, well, so I started the program in 2020. Uh, so that was last year. Yeah. And I was at the intermediate level, actually. Um, and um, with the application, I think this can also answer another question that students might have. But the application is um, like, depending on your year, of study, um, like if you have like one formal year of study at the university level, that's where you can put that there, but you can also like do, you know, like semester and years worth of study according to however long you've been studying the language. Uh, so by the time that I began, I had about one year equivalent worth of study. Uh, so I was at the like advanced beginner uh, slash intermediate low level. Um, so yeah, and then, you know, as I mentioned earlier, like the CLS program seriously helped me like improve that. And I do my very best to retain that. And I say that because I still have this book here. <laughs> I'm gonna show you if y'all can see it. It's this like dictionary in Swahili that I actually took with me to Kyrgyzstan where I'm actually at right now in the Fulbright, which CLS language skills also helped me even though they speak a completely different language there. Um, and I continue to practice my language skills like all the time. So I was at the intermediate low level when I began, but I ended up at the advanced mid-level when I finished six weeks later. Great, thank you, Abe. And that's really cool that you brought your Kamusi all the way to Kyrgyzstan. That's really awesome. Um, our next question here is asking um, how 
we recommend completing the application for beginners who have no experience in the language. Bo, would you like to take that one? Sure. Um, thanks. Um, so I would say um, that uh, if you're a beginner uh, for Swahili, uh, first off, that's fine. Uh, we have lots of beginners uh, every year with CLS Swahili. But what you can do to strengthen your application is just to show that you've thought a little bit about what's interesting about Swahili for you. So just because you have never learned uh, Swahili doesn't mean you can't like read about the language, read a little bit about the cultures and the countries where Swahili is spoken, maybe the history of the language a little bit. Uh, just knowing this or having some idea of some of that information will give you uh, probably stronger essays and allow you to sort of talk a little bit more about what's interesting about the language for you. So uh, what you don't want to do is write essays where uh, you say, well, I'm really interested in it and I want to get started learning about Swahili, um, you know, by taking the language. You want to show that the gears are already turning a little bit and that you're sort of, that this is a natural step in for you to learn the language because you already have this interest. Um, uh, you can uh, expose yourself a little bit to the language too. Um, you know, there is a... a lots of things online um you know there's duolingo there are just maybe ways that you could sort of get exposed to some of the um aspects of swahili so that when you apply there's a place on the application that says you know have you have you explored any language learning resources then you can say yes i have and and it shows that you already are taking some initiative um i would also say that for beginner level applicants it can be helpful if you uh, have some ideas about your career, career connection uh, that show uh, that are a little bit realistic. So, uh, you know, you're far out from being fluent in Swahili, uh, but you want to be able to talk about, you know, what field you'd want to work in where you'd be using Swahili um, and show that that's something you're also interested in and you want to bring these two interests together. Um, and then finally, um, I think it's also very helpful to uh, have some ideas about how you will continue using or continue learning Swahili after the program. So as Jessica said, even if your university doesn't offer it, you can show that you've done a little research. Uh, maybe there's tutoring lessons, or maybe you live near a, a city where there are a, a large number of uh, uh, East African uh, Swahili speakers. Um, you know, maybe there's a market, uh, maybe there's a, you know, a cultural center. Um, so by having a, a little couple pieces of information related to that, uh, in your application, that shows that um, this is an investment the Department of State is making in you, and it's not in vain. You, you have some steps after the, the program ends that you're going to take to continue learning uh, the language. Thanks, Bo. Um, the next question is asking um, if the committee that chooses the successful applicant is made up of Swahili teachers or CLS administrative staff. So I can answer that one. Um, each uh, application is read by many people before being selected um, or not selected to participate in the program. So the first round of selection, your application is going to be read by at least two people, someone who um, is familiar with Swahili and then somebody who um, is a faculty member um, in study abroad in, um, in the US. So um, it is important to note that there could be someone reading your application who's not familiar with Tanzania or Swahili specifically. So make sure to um, be as clear as possible in your essays if you choose to address something that's specifically related to the language or maybe your previous experience abroad. Um, and then for the second round of application, there are um, a few more individuals that are reading your application. Still, some of them um, are familiar with the language and others are not. So um, I guess to answer your question, the CLS program, while we do read your applications, we are not scoring them um, for the application process. And then all, all of our recommendations go to the Department of State who, who selects students. Um, and then the next and last question that I see here in the box is asking, how, um, how can we use our experience in another language to strengthen our application? Uh, and I think that's a really 
really good question. And you can absolutely use your experience with learning another language in your application to apply for a different language. So speaking to those, um, your, your uh, academic abilities, your ability to learn a new language, um, learning acquisition, all of that is very important. And it's also gonna ask about your adaptability, flexibility. And I think all of these um, characteristics are important in language learning and they will be asking about those in your application. I don't know, Bo, do you have anything to add on that one? No, I think, I think you covered it um, uh, really effectively. I would just say, um, I would just encourage everyone to apply. Um, you know, it can be really a good experience just to get those essays together. Um, you know, you can save them in a Microsoft Word document. And then, you know, should you want to apply again in a year, as you kind of have pursued Swahili a little bit more or had some different experiences, you can maybe refresh those essays and use them again or, or make them sharper. So, um, uh, you know, I, I, I think that um, a Bayes experience is really instructive and good because it shows, you know, that, that uh, you know, if you don't get it the first time, you can, you can certainly apply again in the future. And, um, you know, uh, your interest in Swahili and in East Africa probably will endure and maybe even become a little bit sharper, you know, as the years go on. One thing I ask, if I can also add to that is um, like they're like during the application process, uh, there are a number of essays. So I know like, like you know, I have an experience with the, with the application process. Uh, I know that it can be challenging at times, um, but something that I something that I, I, I really recommend is to be as clear as possible. You know, I know it sounds very cliche, but I, but that is like something that I really want you all to be thinking about as you write your application. Like each question is different. Um, and so, you know, for the, for the individual who asked like, how can I use, how can I talk about like my experience like learning in languages uh, to, uh, in my CLS application would be, and talk about the types of things that you had to do uh, while learning a new language, you know, the types of uh, different, you know, uh, learning uh, skills and learning tactics and study methods that you had to use. Um, and if you have uh, any experience studying abroad, really, like find like the most meaningful experiences to you that really stood out to you the most while studying abroad, you know, things that helped you succeed really effectively abroad and things that you learned, things that were successful, things that were not as successful and how you have really uh, did your best to be more of a global citizen and how you really did your best to be more of a well-rounded person uh, because the application, the CLS program is not really like, oh, you know, you have a 4.0, you have all this and that. So you, all, obviously like you're great, like no, uh, being specific and like really arguing effectively why the Swahili program, always think why, always ask that question, why this program, why now, why the CLS program and why am I good for it and why uh, is it good for me and what can I do for the program and how have I demonstrated my success and my preparedness for the program so I know it all sounds cliche but I really do believe that as long as you keep asking that why question and answering the questions as directly and as possible as you can the stronger your application will be um, and you can keep reviewing that over and over and I really do believe that you will be as strong as an applicant as possible. <laughs> Great. Th yeah, thanks, Ape. I mean, all that is great advice. And uh, I can also just add that, um, you know, in that application tips video, there's a lot of good information. And um, speaking to the point about, you, you know, using a study abroad experience and talking about what it meant to you, like what you learned, even if you haven't studied abroad or even left the United States, you might have had like cross-cultural experiences here in the United States like by going to a different city or a different community, uh, you know, having some culture shock inside the United States and dealing with it can be really um, effective, uh, you know, to use in your essays too, if you have that experience. So it doesn't, you know, traveling abroad or studying abroad, you know, certainly is not a prerequisite or a requirement for the program. Um, any kind of experiences that you can reflect on from your own life and use in your essays could really be helpful and effective. Um, there are a couple additional questions that popped up in the chat box um, about eligibility. So um, basically you have to be a US citizen uh, or a naturalized citizen uh, and enrolled in the fall semester now of 2021 to be eligible for the 2022 program. This means um, that seniors, graduating seniors who will graduate in May uh, or early next year are eligible to do the program. They would apply now 
and you know, uh, get notification in early spring, graduate, and then do the program uh, if they're selected. So um, that's fine. Um, you do need to be enrolled in the fall semester uh, in a, a degree granting institution. Um, now that can be a community college. You can, you know, you could be working on, you could just be taking courses at a community college. You could be a PhD student who's continuing to do their research, but not doing actual coursework. You would just have to be working towards a degree and enrolled. Um, okay, so I want to give a, a pause a beat to allow any other questions to to appear in the in the box. Um, answer whatever is on your mind. But we're also approaching the end. Yeah, time. and I would just add mm -hmm. that the contact information you see there, um, our email address. I, I'm one of the individuals that responds to these emails. So uh, we do take your inquiry seriously. And if you have like more specific questions while you're working through the application, we're more than happy to help answer those or to point you in the direction uh, where you can find the answers. Um, and just like my last piece of advice is that A, if you haven't reached out to the person that you want to recommend you for the CLS program yet, please do it as soon as possible. Give them enough time to uh, write that recommendation. And, you know, it is really helpful to sit down with them and talk about your motivations for applying for the CLS program. Because if you look, um, those questions that they're being asked to write about you are very similar to your essay questions. So reaching out to them, um, have a chat with them will really be in your best interest. And then to have someone look over and read your essays. They may have different insights that you didn't think about. Um, and that can really, really strengthen your essay. Um, we have a, a large community of advisors that work with the CLS program, volunteer for the CLS program to help students. You can find your university listed on our website to see if there's an advisor on your campus. If not, um, like I mentioned before, fellowships office, study abroad office, writing center, all of these would be great resources to help you look over these essays. Um, and then I do see that we did get a question pop in here um, that asks if, if they can extend NCE past the 12 months. Yes, there are a few, um, a few ways that your NCE is able to be extended. One is, as you've mentioned, you are still enrolled in school. And the other is if you are in the military. And the other one is a little bit more vague. It's if you are participating in an activity that the, um, that the hiring agency deems relevant. So perhaps it's a, a substantial internship program or something of that nature. Um, but it can only be extended up to three years in total. And the extension um, is um, uh, made by the hiring manager, not the CLS program. So if you have proof of one of those activities that you believe um, should grant you an extension, we recommend um, presenting the hiring manager with your transcripts or with um, proof of being in the military or affiliation did that way. Or, um, the other one, like maybe your internship or something like that, and have all of that information to be presented at the time of application. Um, but I guess with that, we can go ahead and um, end the webinar, but thank you so much again, everybody for joining us and learning a little bit more about the CLS program. Abe, thank you so much for joining us and sharing your experiences. I think it's invaluable to have someone who participated on the program share share your experiences with the rest of the group. Um, Absolutely, yeah. I'm so happy to be here and I'm glad that Jessica and Bo uh, had this webinar today. And I really hope that the participants, I really hope that you all apply for the program and always think why, why, why Swahili and why for all of these questions and apply for Swahili language, not for Tanzania because the readers want to see your passion for the program and please do not be discouraged if you are a beginner level student there are many beginner level students who are successful applicants for CLS program and Swahili happens to be one of those languages where you can be a beginner level student 
can be very successful in your application. So please uh, take heed to all the advice on the CLS website. Uh, take heed uh, to Jessica's advice about reaching out to your, uh, to your recommenders. And please do your application on time. And whatever you do, submit everything by 8 p.m., meaning before 8 p.m. on November 16, 2021. So that's about almost exactly a month away from now. So please continue to work on your applications and good luck. <laughs> Thanks, Abay, and uh, thank you, Jessica, and thank you, everyone, for coming. Uh, we wish you best of luck in applying, and we look forward to seeing your applications. Have a great day and uh, weekend.